Good evening, this is Ken Obasi Leslie, and uh, I am uh, in my studio, as usual. Uh, actually, I was doing some artwork, and uh, I was like working on uh, my Angel uh, series, you know, back on my Angel series or whatever, and uh, in which I will eventually call it my uh, Black Angel series. And uh, so, uh, but hey, you know, as time goes on and as I uh, progress on uh, some of the paintings that I'm doing, you know, I, I will let you, I will show you uh, in, uh, you know, videos uh, that I'm coming up uh, of, of what I'm doing with these um, angels, you know. But uh, right now I'm going to do a, a, a reading, uh, you know, hopefully it won't be uh, that long. Uh, this is kind of the second part of a reading that I started some time ago, you know, around the uh, 17th of uh, July or whatever, you know. So, uh, but my readings are basically, you know, about the energy and the ether and things that are happening around us and, and uh, the energy that is coming from the earth and all of that, you know. So, uh, Primarily, you know, you can take uh, some of these uh, readings and, and uh, characteristics and things and apply them to yourself, apply them to your own life or whatever, you know, as, as opposed to that. Because right now, you know, as I always say that I don't do personal readings, but, uh, but these readings can become uh, or be personal, you know, depending on how you uh, deal with it. But uh, let me get started here first card that I have here is uh, it's you know it's called the uh, beyond illusion beyond illusion and uh, the butterfly in this card represents the outer that which is uh, constantly moving that which is not real but uh, but it's it's an illusion and behind the butterfly is the face of uh, consciousness looking inward to that which is eternal the space between the two eyes has opened revealing revealing the lotus of spiritual unfoldment unfoldment and the rising sun of awareness through the rising of the inner sun meditation is born okay this car reminds uh, us not to look outside for what is real, but look within. When we, fo uh, when we focus on externals, we often get caught up in judgments. This is good. This is bad. I want this. I don't want that. These judgments keep us uh, trapped in our illusion, our sleepiness, our old habits in our patterns you know drop your opinionated mind and move inside there can there you can relax into your own deepest truth where the difference between dreams and reality is already known this is the only distinction between the dream and the reality reality always allows you to doubt and the dream does not allow you to doubt. To me, the capacity to doubt is one of the greatest blessings to humanity. The religions have been enemies because they have been cutting the very roots of doubt. And there's a reason why they have been doing that. Because they want people to believe in certain illusions that they have been preaching you know preaching all this those illusions why have the people why have the people like uh the gotham buddha have been so insistent that the whole existence except your witnessing self except your awareness is just ephemeral made of the same same stuff as dreams that dreams are made of. 
you're not saying that they're these trees are not there they are just saying that the pill pillars are not there don't understand because of the word illusion it has been translated as illusion but illusion is not the right word illusion does not exist reality exists maya or maya is just in between it's almost it almost exists. As far as the day-to-day -day activities are concerned, it can be taken as reality. Only, the, only in the human sense, from the peak of our illusion, it becomes unreal, illusionary. You know, so yeah, we, we do live in what you call a holographic universe or whatever, you know, and, and basically uh, all is mine and the universe is mental. So, uh, I mean, uh, we are, you know, all collectively uh, creating what we perceive or what we, you know, what we see, you know, not with our eyes, but with, you know, our, our perception, you know, uh, that thing that, uh, that creates, you know, what we think is reality within our perception. And uh, next card is the master. The master don't teach the truth. There's no way to teach it. It is a transmission beyond scriptures, beyond words. It is, it is a transmission. It is energy provoking energy into you. It's a kind of synchronicity. You have to approach the master with great love, with great trust, and with an open heart. You are not aware. You are not aware who you are. He is aware who he is. He is aware who you are. The caterpillar might be, might said, be said to be unaware that it may become a butterfly. You are the caterpillars. All caterpillars are. Bolden stratus and all Bolden stratus are caterpillars. The master disciplined relationship is a relationship between the caterpillar and the butterfly. A friendship between the caterpillar and the butterfly. The bu butterfly cannot prove that the caterpillar can become a butterfly. There's no logical way but the butterfly can provoke a longing in the caterpillar that is that is very very possible so we're, we're dealing with the master you know and 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 the master is just one that he's uh, that transmit the truth you know uh, he is not the truth you know and because uh, he he in a sense, they're not real, you know. But then again, you know, it's just that it uh, uh, depends on what your perception is, you know. So we're, we're going back to perception because truth is how you see it. Traveling. I have it upside down. Traveling. And uh, life is a con continuity always in always there's no final destination is going towards it is going towards just the pilgrimage just the journey itself is life not reaching to some point no goal just dancing and being in pilgrimage 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 moving joyously without bothering about any destination what will you do by getting to a destination. Nobody has has asked this because everybody's trying to have some destination in life. But the implications, if you really reach that destination in life, then what? Then what? Then you would look very embarrassed because nowhere, there's nowhere else to go. You have reached to the final destination in that journey you have lost everything 
you had had to lose everything. So standing naked at the final destination, you would look at all around like an idiot. What was the point? What was the point? You were hurrying so fast and so hard and you were worrying so hard and this is the outcome. You know, it's just, uh, I mean, sometimes out there driving, you know, it says everybody's like speeding, you know, just, hey, trying to get somewhere fast or not, you know, get to that destination or whatever, you know, it's just, Hey, you know, I gotta get there. You know, uh, what's the what's the point? You know, what's what's going on with that? You know, I mean, you know, I mean, it's just you get there when you get there, and if you don't want to be late, I guess uh, just leave earlier. Yeah, but hey, I'm not telling anybody how to drive, but hey, you know, all I can say is just be safe out there. You know. Now, uh, this next one is guilt. Whoa, 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 whoa. Here we go. Guilt. And, uh, oh, as you kind of notice, like my music cut off. Um, you know, it's just that, uh, well, guilt is the most destructive emotion in which we can get caught up in. You just don't want to really be caught up in guilt. If you have wronged another or gone against your own truth, then of course you will feel bad. But to let ourselves be overwhelmed with guilt is to invite nightmare or migraine, at, you know, at the least. We end up surrounded by uh, nagging clouds of self-doubt, feelings of worthless, worth Listeners, to the point where we cannot see any of the beauty and the joy of life trying that uh, life is trying to offer us. We all long to be better people, more loving, more aware, more true to ourselves. But when we punish ourselves for our failures by feeling guilty, we get locked up into a cycle of despair and hopelessness and and it robs us of the clarity about ourselves and the situation we encounter. You are absolutely okay as you are. And it is absolutely natural to go astray from time to time. Just learn from it. Just learn from it. Just move on. And use the lessons not to make the same mistake again. This moment this here now is forgotten when you start thinking in terms of achieving something. When the achieving mind arises, you lose contact with the paradise you're in. This is one of the most liberating approaches. It liberates you right now. Forget all about sin and forget all about saintly, saintliness. Both are stupid. Both together have destroyed all the joys of humanity. The sinner is feeling guilty, hence his joy is lost. How can you uh, enjoy life if you're continuously feeling guilty? If you are continuously going to the church to confess? That you have done something wrong, that, that that is wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong. Your whole life seems to be made of sins. How can you live joyously? It becomes uh, impossible to delight to delight light in life. You become heavy loaded. Guilt sins on your chest like rock, like a big rock on your chest. It crushes you. It does not allow you to dance. How can you dance? How can guilt dance? How can guilt sing? How can guilt love? 
How can guilt live? So one who thinks he's doing something wrong is guilty, burdened, dead before death, has already entered into the grave. So, you know, it's this uh, one Egyptian uh, comedic saying is, uh, you know, we uh, our hearts should be lighter than a feather, you know, and uh, I mean, you know, it's just that we, we a lot of times fall into guilt based upon, you know, what we've been taught and doctrines and moralistic uh, uh, implications and and uh, pronouncements or whatever you want to call it, you know, and uh, stuff coming from, you know, church, uh, school, uh, institutions, uh, television, uh, you know, whatever, you know, you say whatever, we, you know, we start to listen to and, and just because uh, somebody who somebody who thinks they're somebody, you know, says this is the way it should be or this is what it is. And then if you ain't dealing with that, you know, you're not going down that road, you know, then you feel guilty, you know. So, it's, hey, it's all about uh, your perception again. Here we go with sorrow. Here we go with sorrow. You know, uh, yeah, you know, the, uh, the pain is not to make you sad. Remember that where people go on missing, this pain is just to make you more alert because people become alert only when they, when the arrow goes deep into their hearts and wounds them. Otherwise, they don't become alert. When life is easy, comfortable, convenient, who cares? Who cares? Who bothers to become alert? When a friend dies, there is a, is a possibility. When your woman leaves you alone, those dark nights, you're lonely. You have loved that woman so much and you have stalked, staked all, and then suddenly one day she's gone, crying in your loneliness. These are the occasions when if you use them, you become, you can become aware. The arrow is hurting. It can be used. The pain is not to make you miserable. The pain is to make you more aware. And then you are aware, misery disappears. So, you know, this is uh, uh, sorrow, you know. And of course we all go through sorrow and we all have uh, experienced some type of loss in life and uh, you know it's just that but you know it just depends on how we internalize it and uh, how we use it you know to uh, you know to 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 ele you know make us to you know to get to a point of elevation to a point of, uh, of growth you know uh, and, and taking that all in and uh, and letting it uh, grow us. Now I got a couple cards here from the uh, uh, excuse me uh, Orisha deck, and uh, this one is nine of air, and uh, it, one of the things that uh, with the nine of air is uh, uh, it deals with the hunting and chasing time has become begun and we can see the barrels of the nine rifles they are aiming at the bird which you see the bird bird which flying desperately is trying to hide among the trees and bushes you know so uh, again you know you could take all these uh, 
uh, ammunitions or, you know, things that I've been, uh, uh, you know, the cards that I've been choosing and the energies that the cards represent. And, and of course, you can apply it to, you know, your own life and uh, worries, suffering, pressures and underlying dangers. Some, somebody wants something that belongs to us, maybe creditors, some illness, risk or death, you know. So, you know, it's just that, like, uh, you know, it's really deep inside, you know, it's just that, like, uh, we're here to experience growth. I mean, you know, there's always going to be uh, situations that, uh, uh, where we got to pay this and pay that and, uh, or whatever you know it's just that uh, you know pay a mortgage and you know uh, in a sense you really never never really really own anything you know because you still pay taxes and you still and then you know if you want to do something uh different to the house you know you have to you know get permission to do this or permission to you know well you know uh according to law let's say you know but uh but really, you know, it's just that, uh, you know, the the thing is, you know, it's just, uh, you know, going back to the, the whole situation is uh, having a heart to be lighter than a feather. You know, it's just that, like, we just need to stop worrying about all these things that are, uh, you know, only, only for a little while, you know that are temporary, you know, and, uh, you know, it's just that like, uh, cause what's in our hearts and what's in our spirits, you know, is, is the real home, you know, that's the real place, you know, and, uh, you know, it's just, uh, uh you know, all that worry and, you know, it, it can see, uh, uh, all those dead birds, you know, and uh, and ten, you know, ten ten dead birds. The wings that no longer carry illusions of dreams, would no longer fly through the air as a symbol of freedom, and will no longer wrap the strange behavior of humanity with heights. Uh, they were the victim of men's love for sport. Again, you know, it's just, they were shot, they're dead, you know. Uh, economic and material runs, sad feelings, bad health. The prediction of this card is not all favorable, but it speaks of all these omens and misfortunes. And, you know, and again, like I said, that, uh, uh, you know, it, it just depends on how you look at it, how you elevate yourself to the point of, like, uh, cause, you know, again, we we live in what you call the illusion of uh, of reality, and uh, and because of that, you know, uh, we can change things uh, mentally based upon how we we see things and how we deal with things, and uh, so uh, basically, that's what uh, this card is that card was about. This card is about the message of fire. You know, a subtle effervescence. The rising flames throw out sparks from the logs, burning everything to survive, burning everything to survive. They provide true life to our eyes by reflecting, by reflecting uh, eminent light. They seem to dance through the rhythm of the uh, creaking logs that become stronger as they burn oxygen. Finally, the flames take shape, take the shape of uh, salamanders. 